All right, so this is where I really want to, us to think about comparisons between Earth, Venus, and Mars. And I'm just going to ask a whole bunch of question, poll questions to get you thinking about these differences. And hopefully this will serve as a nice review. OK, so first, which planets still have active volcanism? All right, so we definitely know that Earth has active volcanism. And we also know that Venus has signs of active volcanism. Um, I mentioned that it's been observed to have atmospheric composition changes consistent with active volcanoes. So we know that it has to be at least Venus or Venus and Earth. And since Venus, Earth, and Mars is not there, then two is the only good option. Um, you might be wondering, does Mars have active volcanism? It does not. So Mercury and Mars are both geologically dead, uh, but Venus and Earth being more massive planets take longer to cool. It's kind of like a large chunk of potato rather than a small chunk of potato. The small potato cools quickly and then no longer has the heat to support flows of magma. Um, so Mars no longer active. Okay, other question, let me see here. Do, oh, there's what I just said, but in word form. Mars cooled more quickly and no longer volcanic. Okay, um, which of these planet or planets absorbed its secondary atmospheres, CO2, into liquid water? All right, yes, this one would be Mars and Earth to a small extent, mostly Earth, because as we recall, oops, come back, no, go back to here. Um, so we know that Venus did not form oceans in such a fashion that would have soaked up their CO its CO2. Um, and that's what led to its runaway greenhouse effect. And eventually this situation got to such a high surface temperature on the surface of Venus that all the CO2 baked out of the rocks. So the water dissociated, all the CO2 is in the atmosphere and the greenhouse effect was runaway because the CO2 had nowhere else to go back into the water or into the surface rocks. So we know for sure that Venus is not part of our answer here. But what happened on Mars, um, oh, sorry, on Earth, we know that the carbon continues to cycle between atmosphere and rock and between atmosphere and living things. Um, right now, we are cranking up the CO2 levels to levels unknown in human history, um, but there are still mechanisms to pull that carbon back out of the atmosphere via vegetation and by changing land use patterns on our surface. Um, okay, for Mars, it did have liquid water at one point, so that could have soaked up some of its CO2 um, and definitely would have resulted in surface weathering to lock carbon into the rocks. So both of those pathways for CO2 through water and then through water into rock could have happened on the surface of Mars when it had liquid water on its surface. But now that it doesn't have liquid water on its surface anymore and it's all frozen because of low temperatures, it has a runaway refrigerator effect and no longer has a mechanism to soak up any more CO2. All right, so now the CO2 on Mars essentially um, circulates through its atmospheric system as part of its seasonal changes, right? Adding and subtracting from the North um, Polar Cap. Okay, um, question about plate tectonics. Which of these planets experiences plate tectonics. All right, yes. So Earth is all alone on this count. We are the only planet to experience plate tectonics. Um, remember, there are tectonic features on Venus and Mars, but that just means those are features that resulted from the surface moving in some way. So on Venus, it was ridges and cracks that occur as lava wells up and subsides. And on Mars, there are tectonic features like the um, Valles Marineris. So the surface um, can rip and that's a tectonic feature, but it's not plate tectonics. So that means there's no plates that are subducting under other plates, forming mountain ranges. And therefore the only mountain ranges on Venus and Mars are volcanic, whereas on Earth, there are lots of mountain ranges formed by plate tectonics that are not volcanic. Question about plate tectonics?
Okay. So we mentioned that there is a reason why Earth is the only one to have plate tectonics. It has enough water in its crust to allow the plates to flow. So it seems that Earth's plentiful oceans are the reason that we have tectonic plates. Um, this is also really important from a climate perspective because plate tectonics is the way that rock from the surface that captures CO2 from weathering can lock that carbon deep within the lithosphere, the rock sphere. So this is an important mechanism for locking away carbon dioxide. Okay, which of these planets has the lowest surface gravity? We'll do this one. All right, so thinking back to the Olympus Mons that we saw earlier being so tall because of the very low surface gravity of Mars. So Mars has the lowest surface gravity. Venus is about 90% of Earth's surface gravity, but Mars only about 38%. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, so why is this important, this surface gravity? This is part of what sets the, well, this is what sets the escape speed for um, yeah, molecules in the atmosphere. And so the combination of mass and surface temperature is what decides if uh, an object will hold on to atmosphere or not. So because Mars has such a weak surface gravity, it didn't hold on to light gases. We have um, CO2 in the atmosphere. It's breaking down over time because of UV dissociation, but for the most part, this will continue to be Mars's atmosphere far into the future. Okay, so yeah. Um, when we look at comparative planetology in general, we use this as a tool to understand the diverging histories of different planets. We look at specific characteristics of the planets, such as mass, surface temperature, and then also composition and structure. So the geology and the atmosphere of these worlds is so different because of their histories. Um, the key drivers here of their evolutionary paths are their temperature and their mass. Um, but other things can also play a really important role. For example, when we look at Earth, the only reason we have oxygen in large amounts on this planet is because of life. So it's important to consider all of the things that can happen, not only in the geology and in the atmosphere, but also in the biosphere that shape um, the surface of a planet over time. So I hope that um, you can now compare and contrast Venus, Earth, and Mars. Separately, I would say, go back and think about Mercury and Mars, and then all of the terrestrial planets together. And this is what we'll come back to on the final exam, is thinking about what's common and distinct between these different worlds and how have their differences caused changes over time.